So strategy is beautiful. I'm a strategist. It's just that's where people go first. They're focusing on how, and how is not usually the problem. The real problem is usually your story. The story that you're telling yourself. What is a story? Put up on a screen for people. You got strategy, but you also got story. What is a story? It's whatever you tell yourself over and over again. A set of beliefs you tell yourself over and over again until you feel certain. Right? Beliefs equal certainty. If you believe nothing's going to work, you know, the whole world's coming apart, and you believe that, you feel certain about that, you're not going to do squat to make your life better because you know it's not going to work. Why be disappointed? How many follow what I'm talking about here? If you do, say ah. So you're not using the strategy because you got a story. What's the story? I've tried everything. Come on. If you tried everything, you'd be fit and healthy, right? You have tried everything. I've tried millions of things. Millions, really. List the millions of things you've done. Well, you know, I've tried thousands of things. Well, list it. Well, I have tried dozens of things. Well, tell me. And they'll tell me three stupid things they do over and over again that don't work. That's the idea of trying everything. If you've tried everything, you find the way. What's got in the way is the story. Or if you're single and you haven't found a great relationship and the other one's falling apart, it's like, you know, I'm messed up. That becomes their belief. People believe that. You're not going to ever have a relationship. Or all the good ones are gone. Or they're gay and I'm not. Or I'm gay and they're not. Or something like that. See, the story you tell yourself changes everything. Please write this down. Change your story, change your life. Change your story, change your life. Here's an approach. Divorce your story of limitation. Now don't get me wrong, I know there's limits right now. There's COVID squeeze, there's places where you can't do things. There's all kinds of things that are outside your control, but there's always a way. I'm here with you right now because I said, there is a way to help people still, and to still have impact right in the middle of COVID, even with people at home. And then this little thing on my basement here grew into these stadiums, and now it's grown to me reaching more people in the last five and a half months than I did in the previous two years. I'm able to help people in a way because I developed this belief, a different story, right? Change your story, change your company. Change your story, change your life. Divorce your story of limitation and marry the truth of your unlimited capacity. Divorce your story of limitation, marry the truth of your unlimited capacity. Now, some people get a divorce and they go visit with their ex. Don't visit with your limitations. Cut them off, right? Just commit. This is where I'm going now. Because if you put yourself in a place where you have the right story, you will figure out the strategy or you will find the strategy or you'll make one up. You won't need someone else. How many of you ever been with someone and they've got a problem and you're not being egotistical, but you've been through it so you know you can help them. And then you try to show them what they could do to make things better and they like fight you on it. Like, no, no, this will never work. And they tell all the reason why. Who's ever dealt with somebody like to raise your hand and say I if you've dealt with this. Say I. You know, a lot of people come up to me and they ask me, Marco, what is it that motivates you most? And to answer their question, I reply back with a question. I say, what if I told you that you had one week left to live? Would you regret not pursuing your dreams, passions, and desires? Would you regret not living your life to the fullest? Would you regret not spending as much time with your family, friends, or loved ones? You know, Steve Jobs said in a speech one time that he used to wake up every morning, look in the mirror, and ask himself questions like this. And he said that if the answer was yes for too many days in a row, then he knew that he had to change something. And that should go for all of us. If you're living a life that you would not be okay with losing because you weren't able to do things you wanted to do, then now you know that you need to change something. This man is a self-made beast. Widely considered to be the toughest man on the planet and one of the greatest endurance athletes of all time. I was just an insecure, scared kid. And the only way I could find myself was to put myself through the worst thing possible. He's the only member of the U.S. Armed Forces to complete SEAL training, the U.S. Army Ranger School, and the Air Force Tactical Air Controller training. He's completed the infamous Destroyer of Men known as Hell Week three times, including two in a single year, and one that he started and finished with multiple stress fractures and a 
no one was here to help me. And the feeling I had every morning, I started shaving my head when I was 16 years old. And the feeling I had every morning, I looked in the mirror, was horrible. And I didn't want to feel like that anymore. And how I felt was a, a kid going nowhere, a kid that was scared. And most kids will accept that and look for help. But the best thing that happened to me, no one helped me. Don't try and suck it like most people do. Step toward it. You want to make your dream come true, you got to stay focused. Some people rather get even than get ahead. Stay focused on where you want to go. You will not be a good father, you will not be a good husband, you will not be a good wife if you are unable to love yourself. You have the same 24 hours that the billionaire has. You have the same 24 hours that the bum has. And as you think about your goals and dreams, your personal goals, your financial goals, and whatever that number is, I want you to multiply it a hundred times. And I want to warn you, don't ask yourself how you're going to do it. How is none of your business. See, it's easy to be on the bottom. It doesn't take any effort to be a loser. It doesn't take any motivation, any drive in order to stay down there on a low level. But it calls on everything in you. You have to harness your will to say, I'm going to challenge myself. I mean that what you did last week don't count. Today, today is the only important day. There are 86,400 seconds in a day, and how you use those are critical. You got 86,400 today, and what you do today is going to see me who you are. Nobody's going to talk about what you did last week. But some people hit that wall, refuse to be denied. This person comes back anyhow, again and again and again. And then if you keep on hitting that wall, here's what happens to you that you will have an incredible breakthrough. And it's as if the universe says, let's help him out. Come on. I admire that kind of tenacity. Let's give her a hand. This person doesn't care about the pain because this person knows something. There's no gain without pain. That belief that you can make it happen so right now, whatever it is, whatever crazy dream you have, and we all have one, stop judging yourself for it. Stop telling yourself that you can't do it and understand when you cultivate that fire, when you take that little ember and you fan it into a raging inferno that that thing, that human stole on fire is what's going to allow you to build something that the world has never seen before. Five second window between the instincts, the shoulds, the urges, the inner wisdom, things that can change your life if you listen to them. Got a five second window from the moment you feel that instinct to move. And if you don't, your brain is actually designed to kill it. Five seconds is all you have. The second you hesitate, it's actually, and you feel yourself hesitating, that is a moment of huge power because what's happened is you've just started to pull back from something that you need to lean into. And if you count backwards, five, four, three, two, one, and this is the neuroscience behind why this stupid little trick works, counting is, a, is an action. Counting backwards requires focus. It's also not a habit for you. So when you feel yourself hesitate, you're, you're, you're triggering your mind that something's up. Your mind now goes into a cognitive bias called the spotlight effect. It magnifies whatever it was that you hesitated doing. Like all of a sudden, you're like, hey, I don't feel like it. Like, I don't, I don't know, maybe I'll do it later. And your mind is doing it because your mind's trying to protect you. Hesitation signals a red flag to your mind that something's up. Just that small hesitation. It's a habit that we all have. Should you hesitate if you're getting a tattoo? Yes. Should you hesitate if you're gambling? Yes. Should you hesitate if you are signing a legal document? Yes. You need your prefrontal cortex for those things. You need to interrupt it, make a power, make a decision. Should you hesitate on making a phone call? No. Should you hesitate on speaking up in a meeting? No. Should you hesitate when you feel yourself starting to procrastinate and you know you got work that you should get done? No, you shouldn't hesitate at all. Should you hesitate in saying the thing that you really feel in your heart? No, you shouldn't. Should you hesitate and edit yourself when you're talking? No, you shouldn't. But we've all trained ourselves to. So it's actually this habit of hesitating. You start catching yourself. It's a huge moment of power because you have a decision to make and you got to make it in the next five seconds. Are you going to go on autopilot? get trapped in your mind or are you going to five four three two one and awaken your prefrontal cortex 
and dreadful. Had some heart cardiac issues. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started to think about my legacy. Um, I don't need to be remembered. That's for some reason not been an important thing to me that somehow like when I'm gone, that stuff's pretty overrated to me. So I do have two legacies. The one is my family and what I want to be able to do for my children and I want them to live a better life than I've lived and I want us to make a difference in the world. It occurred to me the last five or ten years though that like I was put on earth for a reason. There's a purpose to my existence, there's been a purpose to my journey, there's a purpose to my, my in my heart, really wanting to help people. Like I, I love it. There's, I ended up at a group home working in the beginning of my business career and it changed my life. I was working with these boys, they were all orphans and very young I went, oh that's my calling, I want to help. And now God's given me this platform and the ability to put words together pretty well, right? And so I want to know that my life was better for the world. I feel like the world today is so divided. I honestly believe that real people from the grassroots, I really believe entrepreneurs, social media influencers, people who have a voice in the world today, we can shift the consciousness of the world. I really believe that. Like, and so it's come to this point where like the first half of my life was about building something special for my own family, our own legacy, and I've done that. The second half of my life is I want to help contribute my part to changing the world. I want my great grandchildren to live in a safer, more collaborative, more loving world, not just country. I'm so passionate about this, bro. I sleep very little lately. Like I found my calling. Yeah. I found it. And our voices all combined, those of you listening, you and I are louder than any one politician, are louder than any one country, sure. are louder than any one little segmented, you know, little a group of people who are trying to get their way in the world, we can change consciousness. We are the world.